no denying, Filipino pride is taking over the world and the entertainment industry is all the better for it because diversity and representation have never been more important. Hey, even Lucifer has jumped onto the Filipino bandwagon. But boxing legend Manny Pacquiao and theater icon Leah Salonga are hardly the only Filipinos that have made a name for themselves in the U.S. Let's get to know these 10 celebrities you didn't know were Filipino. What's up, Fagnatics? This is Discovery Amuse serving up your daily dose of the most outrageous, outlandish, and out of this world fun facts. Our number one pick didn't need any 24 karat magic to become one of the biggest pop stars on the planet. And you best believe his uptown funk came from his Filipino roots. Ding! I'm back to Number 10, Olivia Rodrigo. Seriously, who didn't become obsessed with the song Driver's License at one point? Either you've been living under a rock, or you're just a heartless, broken shell of a man. She's got a healthy belly. Oh yes, Olivia Rodrigo, the 17-year-old Disney star and Billboard chart topper, is part Filipino and she's proud of her Southeast Asian heritage too. I'm part Filipina. On my dad's side of the family, my Filipino heritage comes from my great-grandfather. Before reducing us all into a huge pile of crying mess with her smash hit driver's license, yeah, grown men cry too, you know. Olivia got her big break when she grabbed the starring role in the TV series spin-off of High School Musical, where she played Nini Salazar Roberts. Fast forward to 2021, and her debut single smashed Spotify's record for single day streams for a non-holiday song and topped the charts in eight different countries, including the US and the UK. She even got Taylor Swift's seal of approval. I'm just so in awe of her constantly and I truly would like not be the songwriter I am today had I not grown up being so inspired by everything that she does. And fun fact, her favorite Filipino dish is lumpia or Filipino egg rolls. Perhaps she could cook some for Tay Tay one of these days. Keep watching because our top pick probably got his swag and finesse from his Filipino mom. Number 9. Darren Chris. This Hollywood actor rose to fame for his role as Blaine Anderson in the musical comedy series Glee. The actor slash singer slash songwriter also appeared in other Broadway and film projects, but his most significant role to date was playing serial murderer Andrew Cunanan in the FX miniseries The Assassination of Gianni Versace, for which he won an Emmy and a Golden Globe. Tell me something, Lee. What terrifies you more, death or being disgraced? The casting couldn't have been more appropriate because just like Andrew Cunanan, Darren is half Filipino. His mom, Serena, is a native of Cebu City in the Philippines, while his father was of English, German, and Irish descent. In his Golden Globe speech, he even gave a touching shout out to his Filipina mother. I've seen this has been a marvelous year for representation in Hollywood, and I am so enormously proud to be a teeny tiny part of that as the son of a firecracker Filipino woman from Cebu that dreamed of coming to this country. When Darren got married to his wife Mia in 2019, he even paid tribute to his Filipino roots by wearing the national attire of the Philippines called Barang Tagalog for their wedding reception. Number 8. Her. My Tito Joan would say, Oh my god, I am so proud of you! You have Grammys, wow! This Grammy Award winning singer songwriter's stage name is an acronym for having everything revealed because she wanted to shift the focus more towards her music rather than her personal life. That I felt like. Let me not put my face on my music. Let me not put a name on my music and just give my music the way that it is as its pure message. And obviously, it worked to her advantage after scoring chart-topping hits such as Best Part, Hold On, and Hard Place. But while her, or Gabby Wilson in real life, prefers keeping a low profile, she's not at all shy about the fact that she was born to an African-American father and a Filipina mother. In fact, 
part of her musical influence was her family's penchant for Filipino-style karaoke. And because Filipinos are known to be great home cooks, her grew up loving her mom's authentic homegrown dishes like sinigang, adobo, and kare kare. Sure. This kare kare looks delicious. It wouldn't be a Filipino meal without steamed rice on the side. Her mom sure raised her well. Love you, mom. Number seven, Manny Jacinto. Fight me on this, but Methinks The Good Place is absolutely one of the best sitcoms of all time. Somebody royally forked up. Somebody forked up. Why can't I say fork? Not only did it make us ponder on what it truly means to be a genuinely good person, but it also gave us arguably the most lovable member of the Soul Squad, the breakdancing fake Buddhist monk, Jason Mendoza. By the way, everyone here thinks I'm Taiwanese. I'm Filipino. That's racist. Yup. The show's casting director did good here because actor Manny Jacinto, who played Jason on the show, is a full-blooded Filipino with both his parents hailing from the province of Nueva Ecija in the PH before migrating to Canada when he was three years old. Despite having a degree in applied science in civil engineering, yep, he's way smarter than his good place character will have you believe, his passion has always been in hip-hop dancing and acting, so he eventually moved to LA to pursue his hobby. Hollywood dreams. Especially the messages that come through and say that, oh, um, thank you so much for representing um, the Filipinos, uh, the Asians in general, and being able to see something completely different. Number six, Haley Steinfeld. The flashlight, uh, I mean spotlight, shone on American singer actress Haley Steinfeld when she became a household name thanks to her roles in True Grit. Ender's Game, and of course, her memorable role as Emily Junk in the Pitch Perfect series. I'd, uh, I'd like to perform an original song that I've been working on. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite finished with it though, so let's not be dicks about it. But despite her mostly white passing appearance, Haley is actually of mixed race. She got her Filipino blood from her maternal grandfather, Ricardo Damasen, who's half African American and half Filipino, and her mother, Sherry, is of English, Filipino, and German descent. She is also the grand niece of Larry Dumasen, the former Filipino child actor who starred with Elvis Presley in his 1963 film Fun in Acapulco. I've since been to the Philippines a couple of times, which uh, is so wonderful to be uh, in a place where you know you share some of the same DNA with with the yeah. people that you're you're you know surrounded by. And I see a trend here. Most part Filipinos are incredible singers. Maybe it really is in their genes. <laughs> Number five, Dave Bautista. Come on, man, you know me. Chill out, man. Of course, everybody knows the longest reigning WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And it seems like his acting chops inside the wrestling ring proved to be an advantage when the celebrity formerly known as Batista decided to cross over onto the big screen. Who doesn't love Drax the Destroyer, the lean, mean fighting machine with a big heart in the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes! I have single-handedly vanquished the beast! <laughs> But if you're wondering why Dave sports a tattoo of the Philippine flag on his shoulder and three stars and a sun inked on his left elbow, that's because Dave's dad, David Michael Bautista, is of Filipino descent. His grandparents from his father's side were Filipino immigrants, and his paternal grandfather used to serve in the Philippine military, too. And I think that uh, with a lot of Filipinos, they're just very, they're just very driven. So I think that, you know, that one trait, I think I definitely got from my, my grandfather even more so than my father. Number four, Nicole Scherzinger. So this pussycat doll can sing, dance, act, judge in a reality show, and perform on Broadway. Heck, she can even do celebrity impersonations. Wait a minute, is there anything Nicole Scherzinger can't do? Twinkle. Twinkle. Little. Uh, 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 uh. I 
I guess she can thank her multiracial heritage for her multi-talented genes. See, Nicole's biological father, Alfonso Valiente, is Filipino, but later on when her parents separated and her mom Rosemary married Gary Scherzinger, Nicole took her stepdad's surname. This didn't mean, though, that she had forgotten her Filipino heritage. In fact, Nicole recently recorded a Filipino song entitled Panyaco, or Promise, in collaboration with a Filipino-American musical director. And how can you not stand a multilingual diva? Yes, queen. Number 3. Manila Luzon her drag name should already be a dead giveaway given that Manila is the capital of the Philippines and Luzon is its largest island. She even impersonated infamous first lady Imelda Marcos on season three of RuPaul's Drag Race. Don't cry for me, Filipinos. Yes, darling, yes. But in case you missed the Filipino connection, Manila Luzon, who's Carl Westerberg in real life, is born to an American father and a Filipina mother. When he was a kid, Carl even even practiced Philippine folk dances where his love for performing began until he sashayed his way into the world of drag and transformed into one of America's fiercest queens. Here I have Lady Bunny's last will and testicle. Read her all you want for her charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent, but you certainly can't clock Manila's in-depth knowledge of Filipino cuisine. This is my dad's favorite, leche flan. Now let's see if you guys made this right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this home with me. Number two, Jacob Batalon. Marvel fans may have their own opinions about who played Peter Parker best, but one thing Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man blessed us with is his best buddy, Ned Leeds. You're the Spider-Man from YouTube. I'm not. I'm not. Representation wins in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for casting full-fledged Filipino actor Jacob Batalon, whose parents migrated from the Philippines to Hawaii when he was a kid. We sing karaoke a lot. Oh, um, we'd, have, we'd have big barbecues for no reason. Um, Every day I had like a double and sinigang. Despite Ned Leeds being a Caucasian character in the comic books, Jacob's undeniable chemistry with Tom Holland during their casting secured him the highly coveted role of Spidey's BFF. Can you spit Venom? Do you have any idea? No. It's distillation. Can you summon an army of spiders? No, Ned. Before we go to our number one pick, do us a solid and make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to choose all so you won't miss out on any of our latest life-changing, boredom-busting content. And of course, be sure to turn on notifications in your app settings. Number one, Bruno Mars. It's a shame that a lot of so-called woke millennials accuse this Grammy-winning singer-songwriter of appropriating black culture with his music, especially since Bruno Mars doesn't have any African-American roots. But Bruno maintains that he's not a culture vulture, and his influences like Michael Jackson, Prince, and James Brown shouldn't be held against him and his music. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Although, to be fair, the Versace on the Floor singer, whose real name is Peter Jean Hernandez, does recognize the merit in all the criticism. His father, after all, is half Puerto Rican, half Ashkenazi Jew, and his mom, Bernadette Bayad, was Filipino. Bruno's mother migrated from the Philippines to Hawaii and worked as a hula dancer. She met Bruno's musician father when they performed in the same show. During his Super Bowl halftime show in 2014, Bruno honored his late Filipino mom by putting her name in his drum set. So, which of these A-listers are you dying to meet in person? Let us know in the comments section below. Take home any of our exclusive gear by browsing our merch shelf or clicking the link in the video description. And while you're at it, take our quiz to find out how you can earn extra cash online doing what you do best. Awesome, right? Now, let us take you on a virtual vacation as we count down the 10 places where the Earth acts in mysterious ways. Just click the link you see on your screen. Till then, stay grounded, Factnatics, and see you in the next video.